morning. I'm Miss Bola, reporting from the news desk of Cataract News Network. Our breaking news this morning is that posterior polar cataract has struck yet again. In what seems to be an epidemic of alarming proportions, yet another cataract surgeon collapsed during posterior polar surgery. Cataract surgeons the world over are perplexed with the same problem. Hold on folks. A group of young enthusiastic doctors seem to have found the solution to this menace. Femtodelineation Posterior polar simplified Our correspondent Fragile Capsule is live at the site of action. Over to you Mr. Capsule. Thank you, Ms. Polar. I'm here with a team of surgeons who are going to show to our viewers what femtodelineation is all about. And I'm very excited to learn about it myself from the learned Dr. Femto. Thank you. The femtosecond laser is equipped with different options for lens fragmentation. We find the cylindrical pattern of lens division particularly useful for posterior polar cataracts. The laser is programmed to create three cylinders within the lens. As the laser fires, it creates distinct layers of demarcation from the center to periphery, shielded by a peripheral epinuclear zone. What's even more important, the surgeon gets to choose the number, the diameter and the depth of each cylinder guided by the live anterior segment OCT view. So, how does femtodelineation actually help the surgeon? Look here, femtodelineation has produced laser sharp zones of demarcation within the nucleus. After removing the capsulorexis flap, we directly proceed to removing these zones starting from the innermost central zone. Each of these zones is easily emulsified from inside out within the cushion of the other. Now these multiple nuclear stacks act as shock absorbers. They effectively prevent transmission of mechanical maneuvers as well as fluid turbulence to the weakest part of the capsule. Thanks to this, the potential area of weakness in the capsule is safeguarded until the very end. At last, thanks to the sharp vertical wall all around, removal of the final epinuclear cushion becomes very easy. And the end result is guaranteed to calm the nerves of every cataract surgeon. And we agree that the procedure is a pretty amazing one. To explain this concept further, we have our Professor Plastiman live from his laboratory. <laughs> I have here with me a clay model of the nucleus. Consider each color a femtodelineated layer within the nucleus. As each layer is emulsified in a stepwise fashion, there is an adequate layer of cushion left behind even at the very end. Thank you Professor Plastiman for sharing your model with us. Doctor, do you have anything further to add on the benefits of femtodelineation? The good news is that this technique works well even with an associated dense nucleus. As the nucleus is already pre-divided, it is easily debulked without using any manual division techniques. Now look at this clinical scenario where a posterior capsule dehiscence was uncovered on removing the epinucleus. The protection offered by this approach prevented further enlargement of the dehiscence. The small dehiscence was converted into a continuous posterior capsulorexis that allowed IOL implantation in the bag. 
I would like to take a moment here to acknowledge the contribution of Dr. Osher and other stalwarts who established paradigms for posterior polar emulsification. These include avoiding buildup of hydraulic pressure within the capsular bag, adhering to the principles of closed chamber technique, generating a cushion by delineating the nucleus. You'll agree that with conventional hydrodelineation, we run the risk of inadvertent hydrodissection and the plane of delineation is not always controlled. The inside-out delineation technique allows better titration of the depth of delineation but again produces only a single layer of cushioning. Here is a technique that offers multiple layers to cushion the posterior capsule, precise and predictable layers within the lens. Guaranteed protection till the very end of surgery. But doctor, what about the air bubbles exerting pressure on the posterior capsule? We have found that increasing the laser spot and layer separation significantly reduces air bubble generation. Small bubbles, due to their compliant nature, are unlikely to exert significant pressure on the capsule. And the icing on the cake is that we are ensured of a well-centered capsulorexis. So friends, as the femtosecond laser technology continues to evolve, femtodelineation opens up yet another avenue for its wider application in the future. This is Fragile Capsule reporting for Cataract News Network. Thank you, Capsule. The same group of doctors reported a posterior capsule rupture in only one of the 26 eyes where this approach was used. Finally, there is a promise of a breakthrough of sorts. By creating multiple layers of cushioning, femtodelineation ensures enhanced safety and better outcomes in posterior polar cataracts time after time. And femtodelineation saves the day. <laughs>